Hey FBC kids, I cannot believe it is our last week with Amaze. So I wanted to focus on some of the amazing things that God has done. We're gonna play a game called True or False and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into our big idea for this week. So true is gonna be on this side, false is gonna be on this side. You can jump to each side, you can point to each side. If you want, you can stand up for true, sit down for false. So let's see if these statements are true or false. Ready? <clears throat> God sent 10 plagues to Egypt. It's true. Jesus fed 5,000, I don't have that many fingers, I can't hold up 5,000, with just 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fishes. True or false? That's true again. Okay, God helped Moses to split the Red Sea so that the Israelites could walk across the bottom of the sea on dry land. True or false? It's true. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Also true. The walls of Jericho fell after the Israelites marched around the city. True or false? That's true as well. These are just a few of the amazing, amazing things that God has done. And today we're gonna to learn about another one. So our big idea for this week is God does amazing things. How cool is that? Let's get started with some music and I'll see you in just a minute with our Bibles.
from 2 Kings, which comes after 1 Kings, and we're going to be reading in chapter 2. We have a couple of verses, but I'm going to pause in between because I want to talk about what the story is saying. So far, we've been hearing about some amazing things that God did through the prophet Elijah. God helped him to bring a young boy back to life, and he won the challenge against the false prophets of Baal, the false god, and when Elijah grew so tired and he felt so alone that he wanted to give up and just end it, God spoke to him in a gentle whisper on the mountain. And this story, what comes next today, is just as amazing. We're going to be learning um, what happens next to Elijah from 2 Kings chapter 2. And we're going to start with verses 8 through 10, okay? God was going to take Elijah to heaven. That's what we're going to read about today. But who would carry on the work that he had been doing here on earth? God told Elijah, with a J, that's going to be important, that he was to train Elisha, with an S, to be the next prophet. So here we are, going to read verses 8 through 10. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. 
If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. Elisha wanted to do amazing things for God, just like Elijah had been doing. And as they're walking and talking along, suddenly this chariot and horses of fire appear and it separates them. And Elijah went up to heaven in this whirlwind. Elisha saw this and he cried out, but he didn't see Elijah anymore. So did he get what he asked for? Let's keep reading and find out. We're going to go down to verses 13 and 14. See if any of this sounds familiar from some of the earlier verses we just read. 13 says, Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided and Elisha went across. That sounds exactly like what Elijah had done earlier. So did he get what he asked for? Yes, Elisha inherited the blessings of Elijah and God did some amazing things through Elisha after Elijah was taken to heaven. Wow, God did some amazing things with Elijah, especially with that final act of being taken to heaven. And God planned to do so much more through Elisha. Isn't that amazing? So I brought this little box with me today. It's a tissue box, but I wanted to talk about boxes just a little bit. Boxes are for storing things, right? What do you put in boxes? Well, I use a lot of boxes in my classroom and I pack up the toys we're done playing with and I store them for a little bit. Boxes at my house, I use for craft stuff, for storage or packing things away. There are lots of different things we can put in boxes, right? But do you ever put God in a box? Putting God in a box, well, you can't physically do it, but it means limiting him, making him smaller. You may think that God won't heal that person, or, or he might not ever change that person, or he might not be able to provide for you. And often, we put God in a box because what we want God to do seems too big to actually happen. God did amazing things for Elijah, and God can do amazing things for you too. So don't limit what God can do by putting him in a box. So how many of you have ever had something uh, be delivered to you? Pizza, Amazon packages. What are some of your favorite things to get delivered? Pizza, Amazon packages. Uh, what are some of the weird things? Have you ever um, been on Amazon with mom and dad looking for something and you just find some really weird stuff? Um, like a, a, a kitty potty training kit to teach a cat how to go in the bath, the potty? Weird. Um, I saw this lunchbox that was a pizza riding a scooter. Um, a beard straightener so you can have your beards nice and, and straight. But I also, when we were doing our, it's gross even touching it, I don't like this. When we were doing our VBS this summer, Deep Sea, Mission Deep Sea, we were talking about the loaves and fishes from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They each have a version of it, of Jesus feeding the 5,000. So we did an activity of bread, loaves, and fishes, okay? So I ordered this bread, and it, it looks real, but when you, <laughs> so gross. when you touch it, it's really squishy, and it, my brain freaks out every time I see it. So I'm going to put it back in my pocket because... I loaf it. Sounds like loved. Anyway, Amazon delivers some really cool things and there are a ton of other places that deliver things too. But they're all things that you have to pay for, even if you're the Prime member. But God delivered the most amazing gift to us. And it's free, no shipping, no tax. Just as God delivered Elijah to heaven, when we believe in God, Jesus, God will give us a way to get to heaven through Jesus. He sent his son to earth to die on a cross for our sins. There's a debt to be paid. There's something that we owe for a sin. And Jesus came to earth and he paid for it. He paid it for us so it was free for us. He paid that debt with his blood. He shed his blood and he gave up his life for us. That free gift is available for anyone to ask for. If that's something that in your heart, you're ready to ask God for that free gift, for Jesus to come and live in your heart, we're going to have a prayer in just a minute. 
and at the end of the prayer, you can follow after me to ask Jesus to live in your heart. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the reminder of Elijah, and thank you for the amazing things that you did for him and through him. Thank you for those amazing things that you do for me too. Lord, I love you, and I want you to come and live in my heart. Wash away all my sin, Heavenly Father, and make me your child. I love you, and I cannot live my life without you. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the week. Tomorrow is our last Monday with our series called Amazed, and I might have some amazing things to demonstrate during our last video. And don't forget to join us on Wednesday with Carl, and I think TJ's coming to visit us again. And there will be a sneak peek for our new series. I'm so excited, guys. I, I told you on Wednesday I did a little sneak peek, and I'm so excited. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye.